Hello friends, good to see you again. Sorry I had to cut our video short a little bit yesterday because the phone started ringing. Can I tell you something funny? Guess what? It wasn't even anybody I knew on the phone. Somebody had the wrong number. But it interrupted our video anyway. It was a good thing we were at the end. Hopefully you got a chance to go around your house and you got to find all kinds of fun things to count and you practiced doing your columns that went up and down, and then you practiced your ones that went side to side. So I hope that it was a fun activity to do on a rainy, rainy day. I have another thing that I brought to show you today. This is one of my favorite books from when I was a little girl. I used to read it with my mom. It's called Peter's Chair. And this is Peter. And Peter has something changing in his house. Can you see what's over here? in the little bed. Yeah, it's a new baby in the house. Brand new little sibling. And this is Peter's chair that he loves so very, very much. So Peter's gonna kinda run into a problem. And we're gonna see if we can figure out how he solves his problem. Here's the name of the book, Peter's Chair. Remember the title on a book is always usually in really big letters. And then up here is a name, Ezra Jack Keats. Ezra Jack Keats did two jobs in this book. He wrote the story and he drew the pictures. He was the author and the illustrator. Sometimes one person does both jobs. Sometimes there's two people, one that does each of those jobs. So let's see what happens to Peter in his story. Here's the title page. I'm going to say the name of the book again. Peter's chair. Oh, look what Peter has in his house. A puppy. Look at He has blocks in his house. Toys. But just like you, you might have a puppy or a kitty at your house. You might have no pets. I don't have any pets in my house. Peter stretched as high as he could. There. Got it just right. His tall building was Finished. Look what he put on top. Oh, alligator. Too cool. Uh-oh. Crash! Down it came. Who ran through it? His doggy. Shh! Called his mother. You have to play more quietly. Remember? We have a new baby in the house. Peter looked into his sister Susie's room. His mother was fussing around the cradle. Oh, that's my cradle, he thought. And look it, they painted it pink. Hmm, what's Peter feeling? Can you see him over there? Yeah, he's kind of grumpy. He's not happy that they painted his old bed pink. Oh. Hi, Peter, said his father. Would you like to help paint your sister's high chair? My eye chair, whispered Peter. Look at it used to be blue, and now Dad's painting it pink for the baby. He saw his crib, and he muttered, My crib! They painted that pink, too! Not far away stood his old chair. Ho, oh, said Peter. They didn't paint that yet. He picked it up. Ran to his room. Look, dog following behind. Let's run away, Willie, he said. Peter filled his shopping bag with cookies and dog biscuits. We'll take my blue chair, my toy crocodile, and the picture of me when I was a baby. Willie went and got his bone. They went outside and they stood in front of the house. This seems like a good place, said Peter. He arranged everything nicely. And then he decided that he was gonna sit in his chair for a while. But he couldn't fit in the chair. Ah, look at it. He was too big. What do you think, friends, about the high chair and the crib. Do you think that he would still be able to fit in those things either? Hmm. 
Probably not. For crying out no. His mother came to the window and called. Why won't you come back to us, Peter, dear? We have something very special for lunch. Peter and Willie made believe that they couldn't hear. But Peter got an idea. Oh, look at the alligator and the bag are back, and I think he went back in the house. Soon his mother saw signs that Peter was home. Hmm, that rascal must be hiding behind the curtain, she said happily. <laughs> so she moved the curtain away, but ah, he wasn't there. It was just his shoes. Look at, I'm over here, shouted Peter, popping up from behind the furniture. <laughs> Peter decided it was better to sit in a big grown-up chair. His father sat next to him. Daddy, said Peter, I've decided. Let's paint my old chair pink, too, for Susie. And they did. Oh, look at Now instead of being grumpy about his stuff all being painted pink, what did he decide to do? decided to help. Look at the dogs helping too. You see, he stepped in the paint. Oh, he's making footprints. Oh my goodness. And that is the end. So Peter, he was kind of grumpy in the beginning, wasn't he? Yeah, he was feeling mad. They were taking all of his old stuff and they were painting it pink for the new baby. And I think that frustrated him, didn't it? Yeah, and he carried his chair outside and he was going to sit in it and Oh no, he didn't fit in it anymore. He'd gotten too big. Do you know what Peter had to do? He had to use his brain and he had to come up with a different idea. Can I show you two things that I found in my house? Two things you might have at your house. What's that? It's a fork. Listen. Can I move it? Nope. It's hard. It's made out of metal. It does not bend, right? Oh, look at this. We have these at school. Remember these fun things? Yeah, we use them for art projects, right? Look at, and if I move it, what does it do? <gasps> I can make it in all different shapes. I can twist it around. I can bend it. <gasps> it doesn't have to be straight, and it's not hard like the fork, right? I can try to straighten it back out, but now it's kind of bendy. It's fun to play with, and it moves all around. So you could kind of think of these two things as being like our brain. Hmm. When Peter was being stubborn and he was being angry and he was feeling frustrated, his brain was kind of hard. Like the fork. And no matter what he did, didn't matter if he pouted or if he cried or if he tried to run away with his chair outside or if he tried to cram his body into the chair even though it was too big. Yeah. All those feelings and all those ideas weren't going to work, right? His brain was hard and it wasn't moving and it wasn't thinking very well, was it? But then, at the end, once he got the idea that, oh, maybe it's better to be me and be grown-up me. And it's fun to hide on mom and dad and trick them. A baby can't do that, right? Mm -mm. And maybe it was a nice idea to take that little chair that doesn't fit him anymore and paint it pink so that he could watch his sister use it and she could enjoy it and she could have fun with it. That's when his brain started becoming what we say flexible. Can you say flexible? And when our brains are flexible, they are full of all kinds of ideas. And we can try all different kinds of ideas to solve a problem until we find the one that works. So he tried putting his body in the chair and it didn't work. He tried running away with it, that didn't work. He tried pouting and throwing a fit, that didn't work. But when he decided that he was gonna paint the chair and share it with his sister, yeah, that was a good flexible thinking idea. That was an idea that worked. And now as his sister gets big, he can watch her sit in the chair and then maybe someday when she's too big to sit in it, maybe they can paint it a different color and they can give it to another brand new baby in the neighborhood and then that baby can enjoy the chair as they grow up so yeah it's kind of hard these days right when 
when we have to wear masks all the time and we can't go the places that we want to go to and we can't see all the people that we like to see and it can get really frustrating and we feel like this is going to go on forever and ever and ever but guess what it won't for now we just have to be flexible and we just have to use our brains and we have to come up with different ways to do things and we have to find a way that works <clears throat> and usually when we find a way that works it makes us feel pretty happy it makes us feel pretty comfortable so remember that when you're at school when you're at home when things are getting frustrating don't have that hard brain that gets stubborn get out your flexible brain think and try and think and try and think till you find something that works because look at when you find something that works, I'm going to make it into a new shape. And it makes you feel good. I'm going to see if I can do it. It's going to be a little bit tricky. Oh, I wish that this, uh, I wish this pipe cleaner was red now. Oh, look at him. I'm going to try to make it into the shape that I want it to be. Oh, I'm very, very close. <gasps> do you see it? What is it? Can you tell? <gasps> it's a heart. Yeah, when we use our flexible brain and we keep trying and trying and trying until we find a solution that works. <gasps> Makes our heart feel happy oh, and content, right? And then we can keep on going with our day. So friends, I will be seeing you very, very, very soon. We're almost done with our stay at home time and we'll be back in the classroom again. Yay! I can't wait to see all of you. Bye!